Hello everyone, welcome. So this video is if you just got your donning kit and you're opening up it up and you wanna see what's in it and how to use it. So this kit is completely customizable. So this video, the first part, I am going to show you everything that you have in your dotting kit. And then the second part of the video is basically me using the dotting, the dotting kit and everything that's in it. All right, we're also going to make a mandala from scratch together. So when you first open up your dotting kit, well, the first thing you're gonna see is this beautiful cactus bag. Of course, we have a cactus bag. Um, if you know me, I love everything cactus. The cactus is my spirit plant. <laughs> so we've got this beautiful cactus bag that has everything in your dotting kit in here. Um, so you can use this dotting bag, this cactus bag, to store everything. Um, you can also use it as a makeup bag. You can use it as a travel bag, whatever you want. So when you open your bag, you are going to see that I have provided a six inch round that has already been sanded. So you don't even have to sand it. It is wood. I really like working on wood. So that's why I provided a six inch wood round and it's already sanded. So it's ready to be coated with a base paint. Okay. Next thing we have is a stencil. This stencil fits perfectly on your six inch round. So you're ready to make your grid lines. Okay. The next thing is a little Lazy Susan. This just makes it easier to navigate around your mandala instead of moving it manually around every step. You just simply put it on the Lazy Susan and you can move it easily. Okay, the next thing we have is a silicone paint palette. I freaking love this. Now I will be selling these separately, but um, they also come in the kit if you want them. So these are silicone, so they, you can squish it up like this. This makes it easy to clean these out. I have used so many other paint palettes and they're so hard to get the paint off of. These are super easy, so you simply, you know, wait for the paint to dry and then you just go like that and it should loosen up and you pluck it out and you're ready to go. This also keeps your paint fresh for a few days. So if you're working on a project and you know you wanna reuse the paint, this will keep it fresh for a few days. I think it's only about two or three days. So you, you do have to work quickly with this, but um, you can also put a damp, a damp paper towel over this and then close it up to keep it fresh for even longer. Next, we've got your dotting tools. So every kit comes with these dotting tools, the rainbow dotting tools, which I think are super cute. I love these so much. I will show you how to use these in a moment. You also have your dotting rods. They come in this cute little bag. You'll get a different color bag. They're all different colors, so. Um, so dotting rods are great. So you've got your dotting tools, but these only go up so high to a certain uh, millimeter. And then if you wanted to make bigger dots, that's where dotting tools or dotting rods come in. Um, Cause we love, you know, we love those big juicy center dots. Um, so these big rods are for your bigger dots. Next, we've got some tool stands. Now we've got the plastic one, which is a lot lighter and it is a cheaper option. And then we've got this wood one that's a lot heavier, but more durable. So how you use these is if you are painting with your dotting tool and you need to fix something or you you know, wanted to take a break real quick, you can simply set your dotting tool right there and it keeps it from rolling around or paint getting anywhere. Cause you know, we've got, look, it's just rolling. If I put it down, it could roll. And you know, if I had paint on the tip, it could get everywhere. So these are really nice for using um, them as your little stands while you're painting. 
We've also got a swoosh tool or a micro dotter tool. These are great for swooshes or super small dots. Okay. Next we have a silicone tool. This is amazing, amazing, amazing for cleaning up your mistakes. I really like using these for. So you've got a pointy end and you know an end that's more like chiseled. Okay, next you've got a ruler. This is for when you're making your grid lines. Um, you'll put your grid lines down and then sometimes we like to connect the um, lines. You can also use it for other projects as well. It is a triangle ruler. So it's nice, it sits up and you can see your numbers. Next we've got a paintbrush. This is to paint your base on your wood round. If you already have a paintbrush, amazing, but you can never have too many paintbrushes, right? Next we've got an eraser. Erasers are always great to have in case you are doing your grid lines and you mess up and you want to erase it real quick. So these are super great to have. Always good. Pencil sharpener. So obviously you would do this to sharpen any pencils. And I am also going to be selling these um, soap stone pencils. So normally with dot art or mandala dot art um, we use chalk pencil watercolor pencil and soapstone i've noticed that soapstone is the easiest to get off of your pieces and that's why i love it so much so you will be getting these soapstone um, pencils and basically you've got your soapstone in there already already sharpened by me and if you want to sharpen it some more you just kind of you have to pull this out a little bit more And then you would put it in your sharpener and you would sharpen it. Okay. And there you got. And then if you want to have it, you know, shorter, you just twist this off, make it go back in a little bit more, and then twist it back on. So you've got less of like, it's not as long. Okay. And lastly, a set of my brushes. So these aren't necessarily starter kit friendly, um, but if you're feeling ambitious or you want to do some brush strokes in the future, um, these brushes are great. Um, we've got some shorter ones, some longer ones, some fatter ones. Um, so they're great for using brush strokes and you will get a random color. I have black, teal, and red. So you'll just get a random color when you get the dotting kit. I also do sell these separately if you want to choose your own color. But there we have it guys. All of everything that you will find in your dotting kit is right here. Um, and then if you come with me for the next part of this video, I will show you exactly how to use everything in your dotting kit. But I'll see you guys soon. And if you already know how to use everything, then thank you so much for purchasing a dotting kit from me. And if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to ask. Okay guys, I'll see you soon. Bye. All right, guys, so you are going to have your wooden round. Now, there's no need to sand or prep your wood because it should already be soft. If it is not soft, you need to sand it. But I have already sanded all of these wood rounds, so they should be soft already. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to base coat your round. Now, you can base coat it in whatever color you would like, but my color of choice is always going to be black. So I'm going to get my black paint and you're going to, you're going to coat it with black paint. So I like using Deco Art Americana. You can use whatever paint you would like. Next, you're going to get your paintbrush. If you have another paintbrush, you're more than welcome to use that. Um, I am going to use a different paintbrush just because I don't want to get this one dirty. 
So a fatter one would be better if you have it, but if not, that's totally fine. So you're just going to coat your wooden round. Don't forget to get your sides. So we've got our, <laughs> our six inch wood round coated with black paint. And you wanna make sure that it um, dries fully before you put any of your grid lines on there. Um, I will be using my soapstone pencil that is included to make the grid lines. Okay, so you're gonna put your stencil over this. Now this stencil fits perfectly. The only thing I don't like about this stencil is that uh, the middle's not, there's no like middle middle, which is fine, you know? So you're going to kind of eyeball the stencil and try to place it in the middle which is pretty easy because it fits perfectly. I'm gonna put my finger in the middle and I am going to mark it with my soapstone pencil. Now the soapstone pencil is adjustable. So if it's out and it's too long, you can flip, you can kind of twist this off and readjust it so that it's shorter if you want. Boom, and there you have it. Okay, and then I am going to use, so that's how you use the stencil. And now I'm going to use the ruler to kind of connect the lines. Also, when you're creating your lines, um, instead of like stopping what you're doing, like, okay, watch, I'm making this line and now I have to move this. I have to pick it up and move it. This is where your Lazy Susan comes in handy. So you're gonna put your Lazy Susan there and it just makes it better to move your, your pieces around. Now, if you're doing larger pieces, I would invest in a larger Lazy Susan. This Lazy Susan that comes with the dotting kit is just like a starter. Um, it's nothing really like too special, but it's good for small pieces. All right. So now I've got my grid line and we are ready to go. And I kind of want to show you guys how easy the soapstone comes off. That would suck if it didn't can't come off. See? So, super easy. Now, if you have your eraser and you messed up, you can use your eraser to fix any issues. And then you've got your um, sharpener if you need to sharpen your soapstone. I'm using, I'm using my own paint. <laughs> And you guys can pick whatever. So basically, I'm going to dip that dotting tool in the paint. And I want to make sure I get lots of paint on there. And then I'm going to make the dot in the middle. Like that. It's nice and juicy. And you can add more paint onto it as well. If you kind of want like a raised look, you can keep adding paint, but also keep in mind that the paint might um, start like, you know, spreading because you might have too much paint on there. Okay. So now we're gonna open our, our donning tools. We're gonna get them out of there. So you've got your, your like stylus tools and then you've got your rods okay you also will have your micro dotting tool 
or your swoosh tool is what I like to call it. These are great for small dots or for making swoosh swooshes, which I will be making in this one. So for my center dot, I always like to put the, the I, use, I like to use the biggest rod because I love, I love big dots in the center. Um, but you can go as small or as big as you want. And then I like to take a dotting tool and I like to kind of swirl it because especially with my paint, the swirls, you can see the swirls when the paint dries. And so I think it gives it a really cool effect. Thank you. Yeah, so this will be a an up and coming uh, PDA color. So I'm super exciting for super excited for that. All right, so I've got my big dot down and now I wanna do some smaller dots. So you've got all of your dotting tools right here and you've got a bunch of different sizes. Um, so you can pick whatever size you want. Um, I kinda like doing small, small dots around. So I am picking this one. Oh, also, you know what I should be using? I should be using this, because this comes in your dotting kit as well. It's a silicone paint palette. So I actually have one of my own that I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna use a new one, because these are not cheap. Um, so let me get my old. It, I already have a bunch of paint in it, but I'm gonna pour some of this paint in it. I've already got a bunch in there, and it's, it's still usable. This is from a few days ago to keep paints fresh for even longer you can put um a damp paper towel over your paints as well so that's what i just did okay anyways let's get back to dotting so i'm going to start dotting around So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do another ring of dots around um, one more time, but I'm going to do it with a bigger tool. And you want to make sure that you space your dots out far enough so that they don't touch because they can run together. It's okay if they run together, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but... If you don't want them to run together, you want to place them as far apart as possible. But also not as far as apart as possible because you still want them close. <laughs> so next I want to do some swooshes. So I, I kind of want some bigger swooshes. So I'm going to take my one of my dotting rods. So, dip it and then you kind of want to have a lot of paint down for your swooshes so that you have paint to drag. Now I don't necessarily want to just um, wipe this tool off with a paper towel because I'm going to use it again for the same color. Um, so I'm going to put it down on my dotting tool rack right here, which is super handy. So now it's not going to slip around or roll around and it's not going to, you know, the paint's not going to go everywhere. Okay. So next I'm going to take my micro dotter or what I like to call it is my swoosh tool. And I am going to drag the paint down to make a swoosh. So real quick, I'm gonna make a quick mistake to show you guys how to use this tool. So I'm just gonna make a, a quick mistake and kind of um, wipe away any big mistakes. 
and then you can wipe it off on your towel. So easy way to just kind of wipe away mistakes or clean up anything. Hopefully that helped. I can also make another mistake. Okay, so if I got a dot right there and I didn't want it there, I can simply wipe it away. Okay, and you might need some black paint to cover the residue, um, but more than likely you're going to dot over it, so it's, it's kind of your call if you want to. So the next thing we have is brushes. So I, for this, I'm going to take my number four. Right here. And you kind of want to, it's kind of hard to explain how to do your brush strokes but you kind of want to have the bristles all the way down when you start and then as you move it you want to kind of lift the bristles up so that they end at like a point i don't know if that makes any sense but so now i'm going to do the other side Alright, so we did some brush strokes. I feel like the hardest part of creating a mandala is kind of figuring out um, what you're doing next because I, I don't like follow a pattern or anything. I kind of just go with the flow. Um, patterns just come in my head and I just put, I spit them out here. So, um, yeah. So I kind of look at this and I'm like, okay, what do I want to do next? Now I can do some more swooshes. I can do another row of dots going around. Um, I can I can do a whole bunch of different things. So I guess it just depends on what you want to do and how you want to do it. I think I'm going to do some more swooshes. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to do them as big as I was doing before. So before I was using this blue rod, um, I want to go a little bit smaller, so I'm going to use this other blue rod, but it's uh, like a lighter blue and it's smaller. But I'm not going to use one of these dotting tools because these are still too small. See how much smaller that is? So the rods are super good for um, bigger dots. And with swooshes, I like to kind of make sure I have enough paint in the dot, within the dot, um, so that I can drag it with my swoosh tool. It's also called a micro dotter. And then I do like washing or wiping off my micro daughter every so often just to make sure that it keeps at a point every time I do a swoosh. Oh, 
Okay, I just messed up a little bit. And I got that swoosh a little bit too close to that swoosh. So I wanna show you how I'm gonna fix it with my handy dandy silicone tool. I'm gonna use the pointy side of it. And I am simply going to kind of go in between them and kind of clean it up a little. Now I'm gonna wipe it on a piece of paper towel every time. And I'm kind of just cleaning it up a little. Okay, and then I can kind of fix it with my micro daughter. And it's just a little bit better. So that's another way you can use these silicone tools. I'm gonna put a dot here. So I'm gonna use a, another rod. So the rods are mainly for your bigger dots. This one's being weird. And sometimes with my bigger dots, I kinda like to swirl the paint around. All right, so now I need to figure out what I'm gonna do next. So I think because I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible, um, I want to just do a ring of dots around this. I'm gonna use my big one. And I'm just gonna kind of follow this grid line. Remember, you don't want them too close, but you also don't want them too far. Right, so I'm gonna use another um, dotting rod. I'm gonna use the purple to create some big dots right here. Um, so that's what I am going to do. This might actually be too big. We'll see. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I am going to use the number two. It is small, but we, we have a small area right here. So I want, I want a small brush. So I'm gonna move this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. But you're more than welcome to like, um, if if brushes seem daunting to you, you can always, um, you know, practice on a piece of paper before you go ahead and do it on your piece. I always, you know, I think that's important to do. So there's a lot of, well, it's not a lot, but there is some negative space in here. Now, negative space is not a bad thing. Sometimes it's really good to have negative space, especially if you've got like a super cool background, which I don't, but sometimes it's nice to have negative space. Um, but there's some negative space in here that I do want to fill. So I think I'm just going to do like 
few walking dots right here. Just to fill in that space. Okay, um, so there's also some other um, negative spaces that I don't necessarily like. Um, so I'm just going to kind of fill them in a little bit. I'm just going to put dots right here. And I like doing this at the very end. And then we've got some negative space right here. So I think I'm going to do like three dots there. Okay guys, so once you are done with your mandala, you're going to have some grid lines. Now once it is dry, you can just wipe those grid lines off with a wet cloth and the soapstone will come off really nicely. You can already see how it's coming off. If you watch, so grid lines are there. And look how easily it comes off. So nicely um, with, you know, chalk pencil or watercolor. I've had to scrub so hard with those to have them come off. Um, so I love, I love the soapstone. Um, so that's why I'm including it in the, the kit. So there you have it. You've got your mandala. It's so freaking pretty. Um, so. That's everything. I'm pretty sure I went through everything on or in the kit. Um, I know that this is very customizable, so some things might have not applied to your kit. But I hope that this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions at all, um, do not be afraid to reach out. All right, guys. I hope you have fun with your kits. And thank you so much for supporting my little business. Okay. I'll see you later. Goodbye.